Thank you all for joining us today for our Ramadan fundraiser kickoff concert. Before we officially begin, a brief introduction of the event and series in general. Both Yemen Relief and Reconstruction Foundation and Code Pink host the series. My name is Arwa Mokdad. I volunteer with YRF. YRF provides relief in Yemen and advocates in the US to end the war. Um, I'm Danica. I uh, work on the Yemen campaign at Code Pink. Uh, Code Pink has been working in coalition with other organizations to stop US involvement in the war in Yemen for years. And we always love working with Yemen Relief and Reconstruction Foundation. And this is actually the um, anniversary of um, Saudi UAE, UAE and US intervention in Yemen. As many of you know, Yemen is experiencing the largest humanitarian crisis in the world. YRF does crucial life-saving work on the ground in Yemen to address the crisis and all proceeds from this fundraiser will go to aid. If you would like to know more about YRF, please refer to our website and social media accounts. However, Yemen has a rich history and culture that also deserves attention. The Beyond the War series aims to showcase Yemen outside the context of war and center Yemeni voices. We hope to break stereotypes and build solidarity with Yemeni communities. To start off our fundraiser, we have Zaki Sakatra with us. Zaki's eyes have always been fixated on the arts, looking at ways he could transform a space, enhance an experience, or pull beauty out of something that would otherwise seem mundane. This thirst is what drove him to pursue graphic arts, it's what drove him to establish his own company, Kifana, link in the bio, and create cycling experiences. It's what ultimately led him to pursue his love of world music beyond just listening. Zaki once again wanted to create and his roots led him back to the sounds of the oud. This instrument has always instilled a sort of peace in him and he decided to learn and practice it well into his adult years. Learning and performing with the band Aswad has been grounding him ever since. Thank you for that introduction. And like I said, um, and like Arwa said, we are doing a fundraiser. Um, we are trying to raise twenty thousand um, dollars for food baskets to send to Yemen through Yemen Relief and Reconstruction Foundation. Um, food baskets average at about uh, fifty dollars. They feed a family of six for an entire month. Um, baskets distributed during the month of Ramadan, which starts next weekend um include dates to for people to break their fast it also includes powdered milk flour rice oil that kind of thing um we are already like at almost twelve thousand dollars um out of our twenty thousand dollar goal we're actually at eleven thousand nine hundred and sixty three dollars if anyone wants to bump us up and help us hit that twelve thousand mark right now you can donate um in the link i just sent in the chat um, so please check that out. Um, and the a very helpful thing that you could do is share the fundraiser on Twitter um, or send to a few of your friends who you know would throw in five, 10, uh, whatever amount they can donate. Uh, every dollar is very much appreciated. Um, and with that, we can get started uh, with the concert portion of the evening. So I will hand it over to Zaki. Thank you, Danica. Thank you, Arwa, for having me. Uh, nice to meet you all. Um, so yeah, so I'll be playing the instrument called the oud. Uh, um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the instrument. So first of all, in, this instrument has been around for, some people say, a thousand years. I mean, we don't know really the origin from. Um, and one of the articles that I read a while back that, you know, the oud started with the bow, right? Like, so if you not notice the, the shape of this, Oh, it looked like a bow. They put it together and then creating that sound because somebody, I guess, playing around with the with the bow and make that noises. And there's one being like, okay, why not we put it together and see how the sounds like? So that's that's how the oud started. I mean, this is one of the history that I read about the oud. Um, but obviously, over the years, it finds uh, the shapes. Um, you know, people being more creative about it and then mix it up with different wood. Right, um, and this particular one I designed this in Turkey, and yeah, and it's a custom design with the uh, African ivory uh, wood and mixed with the Sumatran uh, black wood. So yeah, so I 
all of this is handmade and I design it myself and then hand it over to the maker and then they design it. And as you can see, that's my logo, uh, my personal logo, yeah. So yeah, so that's the history, a quick highlight of the history about the Oud. And they usually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is, this particular one have 13 strings, but usually they have 11. So I put additional string called F. So that's the sound. So, yeah. So that's just a quick highlight about the instrument. And I'm about to play. Um, so it's not really a song. Um, you know, Ode is known for the opening of, of the music, right? And this is like more like the soul of the music. Um, uh, the Ode. And, you know, by the way, and the Ode have, it, it is related to the guitar. This is, think about this is the mother of the guitar. So when the Islamic empire left and the Spain, you know, the, uh, the Spanish people, you know, the, they trying to take over and trying to duplicate it and they can't able to do it. So they just create the guitar and that's where they get, the, you know, out of old. So that's how they uh, relate it. But yeah, any questions before I go on to the opening of the uh, concert? Anyone? Great. All right. Can you guys hear me clear? Yeah, cool. So yeah, so that, like I said, this is not a song, it's just more uh, the opening, right? So I'm gonna be makam. So in the Middle Eastern music, they have a called makamat, which is a different uh, melody and different notes. So, and this one is particular one is gonna call the bayati. I wonder if can, can people unmute and clap? I don't know if they're able to, but no worries. We're in the <laughs> no worries. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, what, what I mean. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, if anyone has any questions um, in between songs, you're more than welcome to unmute and ask them. Um, we did break 12,000 um, on the fundraiser. So thank you all so much. Um, something you could do is uh, text your family, post the fundraiser on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. 
um, whatever social media you use. Um, uh, there's descriptions in on the link itself. So if you need any language to post um, the fundraiser with, it's all there. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for your generosity. So the next one, um, I am going to kind of gather from you know different countries. Um, so this one is going to come from Egypt. Um, and let's see. So it's so the music by um, uh, so it's Omo Kalthum. Um, she's one of the you know very famous uh, singer in in Egypt in you know in the sixties fifties. Um, and this particular song, I'm gonna play into Umri, right? And I'm trying to think of um, the comp. I'll, you know what? What I would do is I will I will uh, share you guys the link on the message. For the singer, so you guys can listen to it um, more richer because this is just the oud, right? So, so yeah. Let's see. Um, thank you. So, um, uh, you know, she's she's a singer that is actually one of my favorite one. I mean, obviously, I think people who listen to her 
you know, you know Arabic music, I'm sure they know who's Umu Kulthum. And I mean, even Jay-Z, I mean, do a remix out of that, you know, some of this, uh, you know, her songs, right? Like, um, yeah, so. Uh, so that's Umu Kulthum. Uh, so yeah, any other questions? If anyone has questions but doesn't want to unmute, you can type them in the chat and I can redirect the questions. That's also an option. Um, we are $27 away from reaching 12. Oh, just kidding. Someone just donated. We're at $1,100. Thank you. Robert just donated. Um, thank you so much. Um, keep sending it around. Um, getting to $20,000. Uh, we were supposed to have this fundraiser open for a few weeks, but it's going really well. So we'll see what happens. Um, thank you everyone who's donated so far. All right, so the next one, uh, it's a little bit short is because the song, it's, it's by Yemeni songs. Um, this is one of my favorite one uh, called Gulima uh, Tashuka. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, so uh, the the meaning of this is actually when can I see you, right? So original singer was Abu Bakr Salim. He's from Hadamaut. It's the region in Yemen. Um, so in the beginning of the, I mean, I'm just going to read you a couple lines, of course. I mean, like, you know. We, every, if you listen to the Middle East, for those who never listen to Middle Eastern songs, if you translate any of those songs, it's mostly romantic love stories, right? Like, <laughs> like we are known for, uh, you know, we poets. I mean, we, we, I mean, we read poets. I mean, just to, you know, present it to to the audience, like, yeah, because we are very, um, uh, very creative in our mind, the way that we want to say something. You know? We always say with with honey, not with tongue. So. The song goes, um, uh, when can I see you? Oh, you got uh, goodness, uh, godness of beauty. Tell me please, when, oh, when are you free? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, and then yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys all the links on the music and then you guys can check it out, uh, the, the music and also the, the lyrics. So I'm gonna do the opening again for the music just to get my mood into a different makamat and yeah so <laughs>
So yeah, so that's that's uh, one of the songs that are shorter because it just looped right, and so but the lyric is always changing. So that's what's nice about the song. Um, but that's something that I'll share you guys with everything so you can satisfy to listen to all the song. Who's the who's the song by again? By Abu Bakr Salim. Uh, um, I can send it to you. So this is the um, so I'll I'll send you um, one of the um, YouTube on the so this is the song actually. Second, and it's on Anyone who doesn't know, Abu Bakr Salam is kind of the bread and butter of Yemeni music. I don't know other any other way to put it. He's iconic. He's well known across the Middle East. I'm currently living in Oman, and I went to a poetry like music open mic night, and at least two people, Omanis, were singing Abu Bakr. He's just such an iconic figure in the region. Yeah, Abu Bakr known, I mean, Abu Bakr is like a Mughal in the 60s. Like, it's known, like, but it's from the Khalid side, which is from the Gulf side, which is, the Khalid is like where, uh, they call the Khalid is where, you know, like from Kuwait, you know, uh, UAE, Oman, and, and Yemen, you know, that's the Gulf area. And yeah, they get influenced from him a lot um, since the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, I'm just gonna play some Mawal, which is an improvised thing as I go. So it's not a song. And this is more, I, I'm just gonna play it as I go. So this is something new, something I might be not able to repeat it again, but this is something you guys technically get live music. I mean, live of as I make it up.
So yeah, so that's I was I was playing in three different makamats. So I just jumping from one melody to another. So as you can hear, one you know in the, in the opening of the music is a little bit different makam, and then I would just jump. So it was I was playing a makamat called Hijaz. Then I was jumping into Bayatin. So in other words, yeah. Um, any other questions? Well, wow, both both nice questions. If nothing. I assume like everybody already can know what Ode is. I'm sure you guys have been across this instrument before in Assam, so. Um, can you talk a little bit about, a little bit more about the tradition of what you were just doing? Because I know we talked on the phone a little bit about, you know, like playing as you go and like improvisation kind of being an element of it. But if right. you- Yeah, so, so, you know, like Ode, when I pick it up the music, right? Like, I don't know what Makamat is, right? Like, I just look it up in YouTube. I do my research by myself. And then I come across, you know, like those, uh, you know, that people, somebody know how to play Oud. And I just ask them a little bit about, you know, how to play it and stuff like that. And so one of the things that I say, look, we don't usually Oud, a lot of our Oud player, they go by ear. They don't read the music. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, reading music, it helps when you're in a bigger, uh, group of musicians to play certain music, to read this music, right? So you guys can, so the old can in sync with uh, what other musicians. However, makamat have, there's hundreds of different makamat, but the most main one, uh, I'm just going to talk about the, you know, the four things, right? Like hijaz, they call the Western makamat. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry about a lot of uh, my background. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, there's a lot of motorcycles uh, riding around. So, life of the city, right? So, so uh, hijaz. So, oh, what nice about it is they don't have frets, right? So, a guitar have those lines in between, right, on the neck. If you look at the guitar, so what you notice is that guitar is very limited, but you can play chord. Here, you notice I don't play chord at all, right? It made for one stroke at a time right but guitar they were like playing a chord like right so it's a little bit different um that's why the frets difference i mean there's many things but that's the main one the main one now the second one is the the four makamat of hijaz in order for you to learn the old um when i was learning like the first thing i need to understand is this main one the first one called hijaz now hijaz is the, the western sound so if you want to play an American song, you want to play on this makamat because they call the makamat of hijaz, right? So like, so, so that's do, right? So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, right? So this is how it sounds. Right, so that's, if you notice, somebody playing the piano, it would sound the same thing or on guitar or any other instrument, right? That's the Western world. So if you, so this is just all you need to play is within that notes. Like if I want to play, you know, a Western sound to it, right? So like, so you can play. I, I can't think of an American song at the moment, but uh, um, I don't know if you know this song. Uh, uh, Bella Ciao. I mean, it's Italian, right? But it's still a Western melodic sound to it, right? So that's one of them. I think my friend recognized yeah. that song that you yeah. were playing. Is yeah. it Bella Ciao? Yeah, it is a Bella Ciao. It is <laughs> Italian music. Uh, it's a it's a it's a revolution music of uh, when the Italian want to get there. She music. recognized it from Money Heist. Yes, it is. It is <laughs> Money Heist using that song. Yes, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so that's one of them. Um, then you have, um, sorry, uh, so they're called the Ajam, right? So that's the Western one. And then the Hijaz is, I make mistakes, sorry. Hijaz is more the Arabic, like Night of the Arabian. Have you ever heard of those uh, 
uh, Disney movie, right? Like the Aladdin, for example. So it's like going from, we'll start with the Do. That's a, it's just like just the Arabian nights, right? Like that's more like Arab music, like one of the classic ones, right? Now, um, and then there's Bayati. Now, Bayati is where the Gulf, I mean, all Middle East use this, this makama. This is like really one of the Middle Eastern using this sound. Um, by the way, before I go into Bayati, Hijaz also flamenco using this, this melody, right? Like so, um, you can hear some of them from the uh, flamenco. So, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so Bayat is actually a lot of the Gulf using this Bayat. So Bayat just sounds like. Um, Very special because Bayat have two quarter notes, and this is where it make a difference between the Western world and the, then the Oriental, right? The quarter notes, it's it's between uh, it's between the note, and you can't play it in the guitar, you can't play it in the piano, you can't even play it in the trumpet unless they modify it to have that quarter note tone, right? So if you notice when I play the um, Ijaz and Ajam, right? So I'm gonna go with uh, Ajam, which is the Western sound, like. And then the Hijaz. Right? Now, Bayad is in between. Last one is the Nahuan, which is my favorite one because you can cross uh, world with the Andalusian, the, the the Spain music, right? So this is the uh, Nahuan. They call it Nahuan. That's Nahuan, which is uh, uh, it's nice because and also the Gulf. A lot of the Khaliji, the Gulf uh, region, also play the Nahuan. So Bayat and Nahuan, they always put it together and playing. Um, our closing will be playing the Nahuan. So I'm, I'm keeping that one, my favorite one, maybe the last one. So yeah. So that's the four makamat that I learned. Um, and so technically, the Oud can play any music in the world. Like if, if somebody come from Africa and they want to play some African music, the Oud can uh, complement that. If you want to play with the Western world, you can complement that too. And there's a lot of musicians actually mix the oud and, uh, you know, um, with uh, even with the composer of like, a, you know, like a big, um, what's it called? You know, where all the, the drummer, the violins, what's it called? Um, symphony, right? So, um, so there's, yeah, so the oud can go cross world on different type of music. And that's what nice about that is that you can play it anywhere. So uh, yeah, I hope I answered your question. So. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and uh, my friends here loved the money heist <laughs> reference. So, um, so how about we do one more song and then I know Ottawa has some questions and then if anyone in the audience also has questions um, and then we can wrap up. Uh, we are at uh, $12,100. If we can get to $12,200, that would be amazing. That would be two more families of six fed through the next month. Um, so if you know anyone who might donate, please send them the link. 
uh, would really, really appreciate it. But we'll throw it over to um, Zaki for his last song. So I'm going to play a song and then I'm going to do a closing with the Nahuan, right? the Makamar called Nahuan. Uh, this song, I think you guys know, but this song is from the old Andalusian song. It's very, very old and people can't track it. When is it come from? But I think it start with a, a poem and then I think somebody make it into music, a song. Um, and a lot of actually uh, very famous musicians in the Middle East using this music. So. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Lama Baga, they're performing, but this is the song. <laughs> If people want to unmute and do like a round of applause, that would be awesome. Yay! Thank you. Woo! Woo! Thank you so much, Zachy, for the wonderful music. We're going to open it up to questions now. So if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat, unmute yourself and ask. I believe there's the raise hand function if you want to ask a question verbally. Um, and I'll just call on you. 
I am also a teacher in my free time, so <laughs> I volunteer as well. So it's nice memories of please raise your hand. Um, but I'll start us off with questions until people put it in the chat or raise their hands. Um, and I kind of want to discuss what you were mentioning earlier, Zachy, of how a lot of musicians do it by ear and how that kind of plays into traditional concert structures and medjlis style concerts. Do you mind sharing what those look like? For those who are unaware of right, what a medulis is, what the setting is, how these traditional concerts work, because it's not written music. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Can you, can you repeat that again? I get cut off a little bit. Um, can you tell me more about something? And then I just forgot. Uh, I mean, it just got cut off. Oh yeah. So I was wondering, as you were mentioning earlier, a lot of musicians, oud musicians, play by ear, right? Not written music. So I was wondering if you can talk about traditional concerts and the structure of those, right? Where you kind of have the singer going and then the musicians just have to follow whatever they go with. And then medulis right. settings where someone just starts reading poetry and playing oud, kind of those structures from a musician's yeah, point of view. So, so, so it's a little bit different, definitely, right? Like, so I, you have to understand, I, I taught myself recently like I, I taught myself in 2014 and I practice every four hours right so some of the questions I'm not exposed as much as most of the musicians learning old since they were little however I'll tell you what my experience is so um so I I you know I'm part of the band here in the Bay Area called Aswat and you know in that we have a music uh, sheet that we have to read and kind of listen so some of the songs I don't even read it because to follow up with the singer. So uh, the rule engagement in, in the music world is that you have to follow the singer, you know, right? And so, um, so if they slow down, you have to slow down. If they go faster, you have to go faster, right? And, um, and, and that's something that old kind of nice because they can live between the two worlds because, you know, like the old, if you make a mistake, it still sounds nice. And this is what I learned. <laughs> you can improvise quickly if you know how to improvise it quickly, right? And so, um, but yeah, but in terms of in Aswat, it's more very uh, organized um, in terms of like what music sheet that you have to read and then when you're stopping and when you're playing while the, let's say if they have a violinist playing first and then a wood playing. Structure and this very rule that you have to follow. Now, in the modular settings, that's the original and how they get together all the musicians which is it's a free fall right like everybody start playing and then the rhythm just start playing together like like that's one of the measures and some of them singing the very popular song which is they improvise as they go like so sometimes you say oh i know that song but it's, it's different it's like they make it because some people just improvise it as they go um but they still what what nice about it is that in measures like you can play the melody is a little bit different, but then you know the song. For example, like you listen to certain song. Oh, I know that song, but like, but it's different. I like it, right? Like it, it, still playing in the same makamat, right? Let's say bayat, for example, but they they do some extra stuff that it's different than the original song. So that's why you can able to. It's more like a fusion, like you know, some songs like they resample or fusionize the songs like those, but still, you know. Um, so I was playing, so I like it more in the medjlis style because like I can improvise it the way I want it versus, you know, playing in a, in, in a more like in the settings where it's more like a band that you have to play, you know, certain songs for the audience. And it's almost like a symphony too, right? Like we're not symphony, but like it's more ensemble, like different, like we have like Six violinists, you know, five odes, um, but we have to fight, we have to in tune and in sync. But in this again, it's free fall. So like you can play as long as you're playing the same makamat and still sound nice. And it's more fun because people start stand up and that's it. I mean, <laughs> it's just nice, yeah. Yeah, thank you for going over those differences between a swat and then a medjlis setting. Really fascinating. Yeah. We have a question from Mary in the audience. She's wondering about the okay. relationship of poetry to Yemeni music. Okay. Um, do you mind talking about that? Yeah, I mean, poetry has been around in, in not just in Yemen, but like in Middle East, right? But I mean, Yemen known for 
poetry. I mean, like we even have a TV show for just a poetry, right? Like it's 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 the culture. It's part of us DNA from like years, thousands of years. So it's um, <laughs> and I think I think that's one of the reason why every time you hear a story from like I hear a story from my dad or my my grandfather, they're always good at talk like win my my mom heart or my grandma heart it's like because of it's just embedded in them like how they talk they're like a sweet talk and it's very poetic um yeah so i mean i grew up you know it's interesting because now i growing up i realized that when you're growing up and people talk you know very poetic you you think it's normal and then when I come to the U.S. when I was 16 and I start to realize it's like people look at me like weird like the way I talk and when I try to translate it in English and it, it's funny I mean it's just it's just interesting it's like oh it's not to them it's not normal it's different like it's very poetic right it's like why are you so very poetic when you talk when you can't you know, talk normal I'm like I don't see that and so yeah so uh, it, I, I realized when I was, I come to America. So, I mean, I, you know, so that's from my experience in my life. So, yeah, I hope I answer your question. Mary, is it, Mary? Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, I love that answer. Like you said, Yemeni, Yemeni and like Arab tradition in general is very poetic. Yeah. And a lot of these like old school songs are just poems that people have added music to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, most music technically is poem. I mean, I can, you know, so they started with poem. I mean, a lot of music, they they took it from old poem books. Mm -hmm. You know, so and you can hear that, like Lama Bada Yatatana, for example, that's one of them. It wasn't um, some say it wasn't a song. It was a original from poet, and they converted into. Yeah. If anyone has any other questions, um, again, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat. If not, I'll go on to our. Oh, Dana could go for it. Just to chime in really quick, we're twenty five dollars away from our final goal of the night, which is twelve thousand three hundred dollars. Right now, we're at. 12,275. So if we could get a last $25 in there, that would be amazing. That would be such a great accomplishment for this uh, fundraiser. So that's my last plug for the fundraiser. I'm gonna stop asking you all for money now. Uh, Ed, you can see it. Without, this is what it looks like mm -hmm. without the metric. Great. It's nice because it has a nice little- I look forward to that. Uh, okay. So, if there's not a question in the chat and no one's raising their hand, I will go to our final question of the night, which is, what are some common themes in Yemeni songs? What is the common theme? Sorry, I was, I was trying to uh, share all the music that I was playing some of them, so. Oh, thank you for doing that. Uh, what are some common themes in Yemeni songs? The common things, I mean, Mostly uh, Abu Bakr Salim. I mean, that's his the legend, right? And so, uh, is one of them. I can share it also uh, on the chat. Um, and also, uh, and then the other song that I was playing today, which is the um, uh, uh, Mata Shufak, right? Um, which is what I translated into uh, When Can I See You? So, that's one of the two very common music in, in Yemen. Everybody, all the Yemeni knows. When you start singing, like all the Yemeni will know. They, they start singing along with you. So that's, yeah. And he, uh, just passed, he passed recently too. He just passed, I think a couple of years, several years ago. Yeah. We have a question from Thena. Hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Who's your favorite Yemeni poet? Uh, amongst the people, they're all aboard. <laughs> but I don't have any specific, no. Um, uh, you know, I, yeah, I don't have any specific. I mean, I, um, I'm more into, so go ahead, just to go back in my background. So my background is, it's, I never was a musician, right? And, and a poet, and when I was in 
uh, high school in senior year, and I, that's why I get into a report, but I don't have any specific. Um, yeah, so I mean, to answer your question, I don't have any specific poet, but I mean, the musician is also the poet. I mean, they, they wrote this music. So, so uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, also, something about Yemeni poetic tradition and that you were discussing earlier is it's the culture itself is very poetic. So, when I think of poems that I've heard, a lot of times it's people talking right and it's through it's reached so many mouths this poetry like it's hard to find the original yeah or people themselves when you're talking to a kind of an elder person uh someone who's viewed as like a, a tribal leader or whatnot right they'll yeah. give their answers in poetry i remember that would drive me nuts as a child where i would ask my grandma for something and she would respond to the poem Right, and I'm like, no, I want a clear answer, Grandma. Like, don't just go to the poetry right now. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're right. You know, like, so what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> it means. It's like, um, yeah. So yeah, poetry is really embedded in everyday life in Yemen, I would say. So I also struggle with that question: Who's your favorite Yemeni poet? And I'm like, I guess it's the people around me. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm about to give you guys the English translations of the uh, the Yemeni songs that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's the uh, translation. Sorry, but that's a lot. But no, thank you so much for sharing everything in the chat, Danica. Unless you have anything to add, I think we can start shifting to closing statements. Yeah, closing. That's sounds good. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Zaki, for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for the generous donations. We're really glad that we were able uh, to raise so much money tonight. And in general, this fundraiser is going to stay open for a while. It's our Ramadan fundraiser. So feel free to share it with others, donate, whatever it may be. We really appreciate any support. And Yemen needs the support as well. And in general, please keep an eye out for our Beyond the War series. We're going to continue doing these. Uh, and it's a great opportunity to learn about Yemeni culture and hear unique Yemeni perspectives, such as Zaki's. <laughs>